But I want to share a message with you. I promise I will try to be brief uh, today. It's a lengthy message, and I'll try to get to the high point of this. I was so blessed when the Lord dropped us in my heart. And, you know, you know, we've always looked at mothers, you know, children honor your mother, bless your mother. Your mothers are wonderful and fathers. We thank God for fathers. You know, without fathers, we wouldn't be here as well, you know. But when the Lord dropped this in my heart, I was like, oh, it was a new take on looking at mothers. And I was like, oh, it is an honor. And I want you to go with me. You're wondering, what is she going to say? When, he, when, when this message came, it was nurturers of destiny. Can you say that with me? A mother is a nurturer of destiny. We know mother's love. We've seen the beautiful poems and songs that have been written about mother's love, unfailing love. And mother is always there and mother make the the selfless sacrifice. But within that comes that core, the mother is a nurturer of destiny. Amen. Amen. Within that child that that mother is carrying is destiny. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Say, I am a destiny that was carried by my mother. Amen. Praise God. Go with me to some scriptures. Let's go over to Psalms 27 and verse 3. And this mic is just a little too hot. Just need to come down with the treble a little, please. Psalms 27 and verse 3. And I'll actually just start at verse 1. It says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. And this is a key verse. Lo, or look, listen, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children are a heritage. When you think about heritage, it's rich. It has value, tremendous value. When you think of a, an inheritance, it's priceless. Amen? Amen? So the Lord says, children are a heritage from the Lord. In other words, or they're an inheritance of blessings and value from who? The Lord. From the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. So mothers, it is a, a reward from God that he has blessed us. Verse 3, Psalms 127. Let's go all over to Jeremiah also, chapter 1, and verse 6 to 8. Jeremiah, chapter 1. And while I'm going over to there, can I ask someone to look up Psalms 127, verse 3, the verse that I just read, but look at it in the Amplified for me. I want to hear, I want you to hear that in the Amplified. As I go over to Jeremiah chapter 1, I want, to, I want you to hear that. I, that verse, children are a heritage of the Lord. Pastor, if you've, got, if you've got that, would you go ahead and read that, please? Amplified, classic. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Is that the Amplified? That's the Amplified. It's not taking it There's where I need to go. Could you look may, at the Passion for me, please? Oh, it says, beloved, uh, well, the Amplified regular. The old children are a heritage and a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. Okay. Let's go over to the Passion, please, okay. on that. Okay, Just go ahead and read it, please, Carla. Praise God. 
Children are God's love gift, their heaven's generous reward. Ah, children are God's love gift and heaven's, and heaven's generous reward. Generous reward. Children are God's or have love gift. Love. Oh, children are an expression of God's love. Amen. Go over to Jeremiah chapter 1 for me, please. Chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. And he says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, I have formed you in the belly. Which belly? Your mother's belly. The womb. In Psalms 139, it's the scripture says, We are fearfully, children are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous in God's sight. So God has formed the, the child in, in the mother's womb. Amen. And it says, I knew thee, and before thou came forth out of the womb, I have done what? I have sanctified thee. In other words, I've set you apart. I've destined you. I've marked you. And I have ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And that was Jeremiah. He was called to be a prophet. But that word goes for everybody. While we're in the womb, God has saw us and he has sanctified or ordained us. Amen. One more scripture. Go over to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. And listen to this scripture. And I'd like this in the Amplified, please. Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read it in the King James verse, and I'll ask for the antifi um, Amplify. Praise God. Children are heaven's love gift. It says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And what did the Amplified of that say, please? In him, we also were, ma were made God's heritage or portion. We obtained an inheritance, for we had been foreordained, chosen and appointed beforehand, in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. Read that again for me, please, Pastor. In him, we also were made God's heritage mm. portion, and we obtained an inheritance. For we had been foreordained, chosen, and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. Amen. So in him, we have been foreordained, predestined for his plan and his purpose. I want you to turn to somebody and say, God have a destiny for you. God has a destiny for you. You are destined for greatness. Tell them that. Amen. So within each child in a mother's womb is a precious love gift from God. As mothers, we nurture and cultivate destiny. Our children are created by God for greatness to express his love and glory to their generation. And you see, when we understand and comprehend the weight, the magnitude, and the scope of this, we will do everything within our ability and depend on his strength and wisdom to cultivate the gift received from God. Amen. I think back in Genesis and when God said to Adam, he said, Adam, I want you to multiply and fill the earth. You got to understand that statement when God says, Adam, 
multiply, fill the earth. How was it going to be filled? With Adam and Eve as children were procreated within and grew within the womb of Eve, they would come forward. What was God saying? Adam, multiply, fill the earth. The question is, fill the earth with what? Or fill the earth with who? Let's take a step back and we ask, who was Adam? Come on, talk to me. Who was Adam? <laughs> Created the image of? Oh, so Adam, God blew into Adam and transferred himself and formed Adam. So Adam became an expression of God. So then God says, Adam, I started the process. No, I want you to replicate the process through what? Through children. So the question that is asked, when children come, who are children? They are to be an expression of God. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? They are to be an expression of God. So if children are an expression of God, and we've just read in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11, where God says he has four what? Ordained. Come on, talk to me today, church. He has what? Four ordained and predestined us for what? For, for, come on, come on, talk to me. For what? God, y'all not talking to me today. I, remember, I'm a preacher. You got to talk back to the preacher. He has foreordained for what? For greatness. So within you, within you, within you, within you, within you, there is what? Ah. Oh. So because there is greatness, I see greatness. As a mother, I see greatness in my children because I'm carrying greatness. Amen. I don't know if you remember the story of Jehobed, the mother of Moses, and the father was Amron. And this was the thing about it. The Bible says when she gave birth, and we knew that back then, Pharaoh gave a decree. Remember, Satan is always after destroying the destiny of children. Because if he can destroy the next generation, he will stop the, proper, the, the spread of God. You understand? That's why there is such an attack on children and the youth. That's why there's been such a push. Do you know how many children, and I didn't want to go off into this, but it's come in my spirit. That's why abortion is Stopping lives that are destined for greatness. Listen, I understand there may be times of critical medical um, emergencies that in order to save the life of that mother, instead of losing both, I understand the medical dilemma and the challenge there. But I also know that there has been over the decades a tremendous amount of attack in stopping the lives of children from being born. And if you stop them, you will stop the destiny that God wants to release in this earth. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. I think of one great man by the name of Moses. And Pharaoh was, de was determined to stop the destiny of the children of Israel. And what did he say? Midwives, I want you to kill all of those babies when they're born, especially the male. Kill the male. What's in the male? The seed. Stop them. But thank God for a godly mother. The Bible says, Jehobed, when she gave birth, 
And it is believed that she was one of the leading midwives of the time. They feared God. And when she gave birth, and she looked and she says, no, there's destiny in my womb. I am not going to destroy this child. This child is destined for greatness. The Bible says for months, as long as she could, she did what? She hid the baby. And in so hiding the baby, she said, God, you've given me this destined child. I see the destiny of him. Lord, you're going to watch over him. And she released her faith. And when it came to the point where the, she could no longer hide the child anymore, she released her faith. Mothers, we've got to release our faith over our children. We'll do, but we've got to release it in faith. I'll throw a little side note in. I was dealing with a situation a few weeks ago, and I'm jumping ahead of myself. And I'm so glad to see the faith was coming out of one of my child. And she came in the room and she came and she took my hand. And she says, Mom, now don't you worry. You've got to trust God. And she took my hand and she says, Mom, you've got to pray. I said, well, why don't you go ahead and pray, baby? She took my two hands and she prayed. And I was like, ooh, ooh, she prayed, ooh. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't about the loudness. But it was about the faith that came out of that prayer. And I said, stop it. I said, honey, you got that in you. So what the Jehobah did? She released her faith. She made a basket. And she waterproofed the basket. She knew my child is not going to die. There is destiny. I've just carried destiny. I've just given birth to destiny. And she took that baby and wrapped that baby and she put the baby in the river. And she didn't just stop there. She didn't just let the baby go and say, oh, wherever the baby land. No. You see, as a mother, we're always watching over our children to make sure they stay on the path of destiny for their greatness and purpose. Amen. Amen. So to the children, the younger children, when your mother gets on you, and even the teenagers and the young adults, when your mother gets on you, it's not because she wants to nag you, but it's she wants to ensure that you stay on course for your destiny. And as the older they get, we have to step back. Sometimes it's a little more difficult for some mothers than others. Some mothers have mastered that skill. Some mothers are still navigating through that, you know. And mothers, you can understand what I'm saying. You know, some of us are still navigating. I'll confess, I still, I'm still navigating. But going back to Jehobed, so she put the baby in the river, the river Nile, but this is faith now. She said, my destiny is going to be watched. I want to see where my child lands. And she sent Miriam, her daughter, and said, go watch. And as, I, don't you know, as that baby was there, I believe she was saying, God, you have given me this destined child, and you're going to take care of this child. The Bible says that baby went, and as the baby was floating down the Nile, wouldn't you know it, that Pharaoh's daughter, found the destined child. Mothers, and I'm spoken to myself too, when we release our destined children in the hands of God, we can rest. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that, that God is watching over our children. He's as as we speak his word, do you remember what he said in Isaiah? What did he say in Isaiah? He said, my word will come to pass. It will not go void. It will not return unto me void. It will what? Come to pass. 
it will prosper. So mothers, as we release our children, we got to say the right words over them. Even when the situation is bombarding us, even when it seems impossible, even when it seems difficult, it's like, oh my God, what's happening? Oh, we've got to speak the right word over them. Amen. Amen. And as she was watching that, and as she released Miriam to go and watch, the child was found by Pharaoh's daughter. And God moved upon Pharaoh's daughter, and she said, this is one of the Hebrew children. And no sooner she took that child and just fell in love with that baby, Miriam came up and Miriam says, would you like me to get somebody to watch that baby for you? And Miriam went and got her mother. Ain't it like God? To put people in your path, in, in your children's path, mothers, ah. I tell you one of the things I've learned, and I'll tell you this, I'm learning more and more, and I really am, more and more, even over this past six months, my children want to go somewhere, do something, pray, pray, pray. That prayer will come and intercept them. All of a sudden they come back and say, Mom, you wouldn't believe who I met. Who do you meet? Oh, this is such and such and such a person. I was like, oh, your steps were led by the Lord. Oh, because of prayer. But I found the other side. When you're speaking, you're, you're stopped up. It becomes, a re they resist that. But when you pray and release God's word, that word comes in and begins to guide. God's word goes before them and guide them. I think of the scripture in, in, in Proverbs that says, a man will plan his ways, but the Lord will direct his steps. Mothers, do you know how we can do it? We can pray God's word over them, especially when they get to a certain age and you know they're not going to listen. You know, they're in their own. Pray God's word over them. Pray God's word over them. Pray God's word over them. Even when it's, you get to pray God's word over them. And that word will guide. Guide, guide them. I, I have a cousin and she uses this term and every time she uses it, and for the, to the Jamaicans in the house, you'll understand. She said, Manaplan got a mashup. <laughs> <laughs> so every time she, every time that when my, I think of that statement and she, and it just kind of pretty, oh yeah, yeah, they're planning all right, but got a mashup. In other words, God will lead them. Amen. Praise God. I got to get back to my notes. Amen. I got locked out of my notes here. And so it is. What happened is his destiny was fulfilled. She came and she spoke in him and she taught him God's ways. And as a result, he became a deliverer. He became the deliverer for a nation. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just going down in my notes. You know, Abraham, you know what God said to Abraham? God said to Abraham in Abraham in Genesis 18 and verse 19. He says, Abraham, I know that you're going to command your children after me. Well, how is Abraham going to command his children? Abraham is going to lead his house and his wife would come in line and as a couple they would lead in their house. And as a mother, she would pour in and cause the children to be led in the way of God. Amen. Amen. So as mothers, we have, to, we have to speak into the lives of our children. We have to lead them in the way of God. Praise God. We are cultivators. We are nurturers of the precious love gift. What does nurture do? You nurture you. Feed them, you suck of them. Not just in the natural food, but also in the spiritual things. Teaching them things that are right. Teaching them things that are pure. Teaching them things that are morally upright. Teaching them how to be compassionate and caring and understanding. <laughs> you know, 
you can do that and you don't even realize the depths of it in, in your children. My children went out somewhere a few weeks ago and one of them called and says, oh, we're on our way now. We got, we, you know, we got sidetracked. I said, how do you get sidetracked? Oh, somebody did something for us and then we decided to, to drive them to the station. So I said, and, and their daddy said, are you an Uber? <laughs> Why didn't they go on the Uber? He, the person called for an Uber, but they decided to be the Uber for this person and help the person out. And we said, are you the Uber? They could have taken the Uber. You know, the response was, well, mom, I know that you always help people and you always go out of your way for people. So this is what I did. Oh, we poured into them. And what do they do? You start to see it back. So that's why as mothers, we got to pour the right things in them. We, you got to nurture them in the right things. And as we nurture them in the right things, they'll start to spit it out. I don't know how, how if some of you, I don't know if you watched some, as last week as some, one of them was preparing, the, they were preparing the table. And I'm watching, I'm like, oh, they're repeating back the things we pour in so that they can repeat it back. Nurture us. How do we nurture? How do we keep that? By three places that I want to encourage you. By prayer. We are nurturers for our children by praying for them. Praying always for your children. Pray over them. When they're going out in the morning, pray over them. Throughout the day, pray over them. When, when they come in, pray. Before they go to bed, especially for the younger ones, develop a routine with them, pray with them. We know we're doing all the other things. We're feeding them and we're clothing them and we're loving them. We know all of that is being done. But I want to focus in on the fulfilling the destiny of God in them, steering them in God so that they grow and develop and become rooted and established in God. One of the things we used to do with our children, and they still remember it. Every time we would drive them to school, even when we were tired, we'd say, okay, now come on, it's time to make our confession. And we would say, in the name of Jesus, today I'm sharp. I'm quick, I'm alert, I'm highly intelligent. Thank God for the protection of God upon me. I excel in my studies at school in math and reading. And we went through all the different subjects. And we would pray for the, the classmates. We would pray for the teachers. And we did that. It was just so automatic for years. From when they were in elementary to middle school to high school, to university. We did that. And Pastor, I believe you said a few days ago, some, one of them asked you for the prayers that you used to pray over them, correct? They're out of university and still asking for that. But what did that do? That established in them, getting God's word in them. There was a minister, and I smile as I hear this. I remember Dr. Betty Price, and for those of you who know back to Dr. Betty and Fred Price, a tremendous ministry in, in the U.S., and thank God for their legacy and what they've done for the body of Christ. Dr. Price shared how one day she was driving her son to school, and he, you know she was leading in the confession, and he got into a little attitude. I don't want to say, I'm not going to say my confession today. And she just smiled, and she just kept at it. Today, he's the pastor of one of the largest churches in the U.S. Amen. When you put God's word in them, you don't know where they're going. Remember, they are destined for greatness. We've got to cultivate that greatness. Praying over them. I know there are times they go through things and they do things and it seems like, oh my God, is my prayers working? But you got to stay with it. We've got to stay with it. We've got to remind ourselves, even in those challenging times, God, you're bringing them out of this. 
A friend of mine told me this and I started to learn to say that. She said, oh, they're going to get safely to the other side. So when I start to get stressed out about, oh, you're going to get to the other side. And I remind myself to ground myself back and says, they'll come out of this. They'll get to the other side safely. Amen. Another way is teaching and living by God's word will result in their own knowledge and encounter with God. You know, as mothers, as much as we want to, for them to duplicate and replicate things, there comes a point where our children have to have their own encounter with God. So we give them the word. We teach them. We live before them so that they will see the example. I think of 2 Timothy chapter 1, I believe it is, and verse 5. Let's go over to that scripture. And this is a precious scripture. This is a clear of a mother and a grandmother who had lived Christ before their children, before this young man, and the evidence of that is clear. Second Timothy, chapter one and verse five, and this is what it says. And Paul is stirring Timothy and, and reminding him and encouraging him and exhorting him in fulfilling his destiny. And this is, it. this is what he says to him. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned, unfeigned faith, the consistent, strengthened faith that is in thee, which dwell first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Well, how did Paul come to that conclusion to say, Timothy, I see in you that word, that rich word, which was in your grandmother and your mother. Well, how did he come to that conclusion? By what Timothy was now demonstrated. When we think of faith, what is faith? Faith is our conviction, our belief, our confidence in God. So, Eunice and Lois's conviction, belief, and confidence and persuasions that they lived by and believed in was so strong, it was evident in their living, in their lifestyle. And as a result of that, it was then transmitted to Timothy. So Paul, as he watched Timothy, he saw that transference where Timothy was now established in his faith in God. Timothy is said to be a bishop of many churches in Asia at the time and large thousands upon thousands of churches. Well, how did he come into that destiny? By the prayer and the faith of God deposited in him through his mother and grandmother. Amen. A third way to nurture and to cultivate the precious gift of God in helping them to fulfill their destiny is to love our children by God's love, not just our natural love and ability. Let me stop here and say, scripture says in Isaiah, can a mother's love cease? And he says, yes, it can. But God's love cannot. So mothers, there come a point where we have to go beyond our natural love and love and respond out of God's love. You know, the older your children get, some of them, not all, you know, sometimes they can do stuff and they can say stuff. And in saying and doing stuff, it can just push your bell. Can I be real? And you may be tempted to respond in a certain way, but that's when we have to ask the Lord to help us. Oh, <laughs> any mothers can say amen to that? Amen. Well, you got to say, Lord Jesus, help me. Help me. Help me that I just keep on smiling. That I just keep on responding. And, and you know, there are times when you don't smile and you miss it. I, I, I would say to them sometimes, which hand would you like to kiss? <laughs> Dougie one or Dougie two? You know, and, and sometimes I got to go back and I says, you know, I shouldn't have responded that way or say that. But it's mothers allowing God's love to flow out. 
There may be situations where children are in states where, you know, it's not, it's not the best. It's not the best state that they're now in. But even in that state, you still love them with the love of God. Amen. Amen. Do you know that God's love and God's mercy and God's grace is of such that even when the situation is so negative, guess what? God will turn it around. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, for we know what? That all things work together for good to them what? that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. So as a mother, as we love the Lord and we follow him and seek his purpose of fulfillment in our lives and in the lives of our children, we can trust him and we can be confident that he's going to turn the situation around. Amen. Amen. Even when it seems impossible, even when it seems hopeless, oh my God, and you think, oh, can any good thing come out of this? Yes. Keep praying. Keep releasing God's word. Keep saying. Keep saying. You keep saying it. God, you see my son in that situation. God, you see my daughter in that situation. But in the name of Jesus, I speak I speak to them. I speak to that circumstance. I command it in the name of Jesus that it will turn. Amen. Amen. And he will do it. Amen. I said he'll do it as we trust him. Regardless of the situation. Regardless of the circumstance. We can trust him. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around for our good. It may be painful, but if we keep on trusting him, if we keep on trusting him, speak his word, speak his word, speak his word. Speak his word. He'll turn it around. Mothers, don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. He'll turn it around. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. I heard someone recently gave their testimony. I didn't hear all of it, but I thought, my God. And it was a well-known internationally famous singer brought up in a strong, solid Christian home. And I don't know all the details, but she shared her, I heard the husband shared and said, look at this. God brought me from prison to the ministry. He was in prison, but God saved him, turned him around, and he's pastoring with this individual. What is that? The grace? What am I saying? Mothers, don't give up. Don't give up on your children. Keep God's word on them. Amen. Keep loving them. Keep praying for them. Daily speak over them. <laughs> Keep believing God. And he will turn it around. He'll bring them out. He'll bring them out. He'll turn it around. I got to close. And my phone locked me out again out of my notes. Praise God. But he'll turn it around. Praise God. 
you know, my children kid me. I say, why you, got the, why you have a phone with such a complicated password? Change it. I think after today I'll change it. <laughs> Amen. He'll turn it around. Praise God. I got to come down. Let me say this. You may be watching or you may be hearing. You say, you know, that's great that you, what you're sharing, Pastor Colleen, but I wasn't always the best mother. Or I didn't do everything right. You know what the Lord says? He says, there's grace. Where you missed it, his grace will cover it. Somebody may say, I didn't know all those things. I didn't know how to live godly. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to because I was brought up in a different environment. And as a result, my children went the other way. But you know what God says? There's grace. There's grace. There's grace. And that's why he said in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, he says, now come boldly to the throne room of God to obtain God's help in time of need. You may have missed it or the mother did the wrong things, exposed them to the wrong things, and it has affected them and caused them to be in a certain environment or a certain state, emotionally, physically. But God says there is grace. Amen. Don't camp out on that. He said, come to me and get the help. Get my help. My help to help you through now. Amen. And you know what happened when you get God's grace? I'm going to demonstrate this. And you get up to that child as messed up as they may appear to be in the natural. But grace said, baby, I love you. You're my child. And God has a destiny for you. And you speak to them as such. Don't speak to them in that state of defeat. Don't speak to them in that state of missing it. They have enough coming at them in the environment that they're in telling them, you're a failure, you're a failure, you're a failure, you're a failure. Don't speak to them in that state. What do you speak to them? Speak to them in their destiny, 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 destiny. When they call you, honey, your, you know, and I'm telling you, your flesh may be screaming, all the, honey, I love you. Destiny, 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 destiny. What are you doing? You're nurturing the seed into the destiny of God. Listen. Don't you know it was, I'm just sharing it as the Lord brings it to me. Don't you know it was hard? Think of Samson. And he got in that state of rebellion and wouldn't listen to his parents. But I believe they kept speaking into his destiny. 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 That even at the point where he was in prison and lost his vision, he came to himself. And he says, God, if you would visit me again, God, if you would come back upon me again, God, if you would anoint me again, I will do your will. He was a destined child to defeat the Philistines. And in that state, he came back to himself why? His parents had prayed, committed him to God, watched over, and the presence of God, the Bible says, came upon him. And he got back the anointing. 
and he was able to defeat more Philistines in his death than in his life. I got to close. Stand with me, please. Mothers, we are nurturers of destiny. Nurture them by prayer. Nurture them by the word and speaking and declaring. And nurture them in the love of Christ. Even when we don't feel like it, we respond in love. And as we do that, we will give release to the destiny of God in our children. <sighs> Thank you, Father God. Lift your hands to Jesus. Lift your hands to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you today. Father, thank you for the privilege to be a mother. Thank you for every mother within this place. Thank you for every mother that's watching by live stream. Father, we worship you. We thank you for the honor and the privilege to be carriers of your love seed to be carriers of your heaven's gift of our children. And Father God, we yield them to you. Those that are alive, we yield them to you, Father God. And we declare that your destiny is fulfilled in their lives. And we work with you, Holy Spirit, to pray for them to speak your word over them and to love them unconditionally into their God-ordained and God-purposed destiny on this earth. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, I declare that every single person, they walk in your destiny in this place, in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. We give you praise and we worship you. Let me say this. For the mothers who your sons or daughters may not be here anymore, I encourage you to say thank you, Father, just for the privilege and the joy and the honor of having them. They have gone on, but thank God for the privilege of carrying destiny. Let me close by saying this. Let me encourage children, young and old, let me say finally, I encourage you, children, in our midst and beyond, be honest, be honorable, honor, respect, highly esteem, value, obey, and love your parents and your mother in the Lord. As he has instructed you, he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. This is the right thing to do. You know, with that honor comes a promise. You know what that promise is? You live long upon the earth. No matter where they've missed it, no matter where mama has missed it, as we stay on Mother's Day, no matter where mama has I've not responded the best way. Just know mama's heart is always for your best. No mother, 
No father in their right thinking, right heart, wants to see the worst for their children. Every mother desire the best for their children. They may not have expressed it in the best ways. They may not have done it in the best ways. For some, there are limitations because of their exposure and their, you know, it's been said, we are a product of our environments, our upbringing, our knowledge. The upbringing may have been dysfunctional. The knowledge may have been limited. The experience may have been harsh. But even in the midst of that, mother's love is always to see their children fulfill their destiny and become great. So children, Hug your mama. Mother, tell them, Mother, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we just thank you. And we worship you today. Thank you for the mothers. Thank you for the children. And thank you for the love that will continue to abound with those that are alive to their mothers. And for those whose mothers have passed on, think today. Think of the memory that your mother has left. Think of the legacy our grandmother has left. Think of the love that was shown. And as you think of that memory of your mother or your grandmother, just say, thank you, Father, for my mother who is now gone. Or thank you for my grandmother who has made an impact in my life. Thank you that she was a carrier of destiny. Amen. Praise God. With every head bowed, every eyes closed. You may be here today and you say, as a mother, I've missed it or I don't know Jesus. Or you may be on live stream and says, I don't know Jesus. Or I've missed it and I didn't know how to follow him. We want to pray with you today. Or you may be here and you say, you know, I'm not following Jesus the way I should. As an example to my children. But today I want to make a change. And I want to follow Christ with all my heart so that I will have a positive impact in fulfilling the destiny of my children in God. If that's you, I want you to say this with me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your full expression of your love to me through your Son. Jesus Christ. Right now, I acknowledge my sins, my shortcomings, and my faults. I come to you. I pour out my heart to you. I turn from my sins, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Lord, as my Redeemer. Cleanse me, Cleanse. wash me, wash. And, fill me and fill me with your love, with your love. and help me, and help me to, know to know how to express, how to express your, love going your love going forward to my children, to my children. and my family. And my family. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you, if you've done that on the live stream, those that are watching by KITV or whatever channel you're watching, contact us. We'd like to get you some resources to help you so that you will now grow in your faith in Christ and be able to demonstrate that to your family and children. We say thank you for joining us today. To the mothers, have a wonderful, God-blessed, God-filled Mother's Day. We love you. God bless you. Praise God.